time I was young, I've always seen not just an animal or a mountain, body of water or an iceberg. I've seen connected ecosystems, how it's all joined together. I see how fragile and vulnerable it is. When you first arrive in Antarctica, you cannot put into words what is in front of you, how rich and raw and wild. It is the most beautiful place I have ever been to in my life. The Arctic and Antarctica are warming twice as fast as anywhere else on Earth. They're the most vulnerable. My role as a storyteller, as a photographer, is to create a connection. And if I want people to fall in love with this place, I need them to fall in love with leopard seals. Our expedition to Antarctica in 2006 to photograph leopard seals is what fueled my addiction for Antarctica. It made me vow to do whatever I could to protect this beautiful place. My biggest regret was that we didn't have a video crew with us. We had no motion footage of this incredible encounter. So in 2017, I took a team of 12 incredible storytellers to go back and capture Antarctica with video. I was curious to see if we could reenact behaviors that were similar to 2006, where we could get large, confident leopard seals to come over and hang out with us. We launched our little Zodiac. We go around the corner and you could see Jordan, my longtime dive partner. His face lights up because right there in front of us is a massive female leopard seal. Unfazed by her presence, she grabs a penguin and she does these death shakes where she shakes it so hard you can't even really see what's going on. She's trying to remove the skin and the feathers from the body in an explosion of water. There's blood and guts and feathers everywhere. And there's this dead penguin and this massive leopard seal. And Yoran said, this is a good situation. It's time for you to get in the water, yeah. I was scared to get in the water with a leopard seal. There's a lot of teeth in that mouth. It's one thing to go in the water by myself and know that it's just my neck on the line with an animal like a leopard seal. It's something completely different altogether to take Christina with me into the water. A leopard seal's gonna come up to you, it's gonna swim back and forth like this, like they do, it's back and forth, back and forth. And he's gonna come up to your dome and he's gonna do this with his mouth wide open. It's intimidating, like that. He's gonna lunge at you a few times, Just be super calm, stay very relaxed, don't get nervous, don't act scared. Being in the water with a leopard seal is one of the most beautiful things you can ever experience in life. They're very, very curious. And their curiosity, I think it's what's special. They wanna be around you. They wanna interact with you and they're trying to figure you out. But just being smart about it is, is crucial. So has anybody ever been bitten? Sadly, there have been a bunch of attacks in the Ross Sea. In the peninsula, there's only been one fatality from a leopard seal, and that was in 2003. A scientist was taken down to 80 meters. I'm very comfortable always to think that every time you enter the water, you really are voluntarily becoming part of the food chain. And I'm ready for whatever outcome that is. I've heard Paul talk about this for years. I probably have listened to his presentation over 200 times. You know, like I've done before, if Paul Nicklin gets in the water, I get in right behind him. As we slipped over the edge of the boat, she dropped her penguin. She immediately came shooting over to us. She opened up her mouth and she started to do these lunges at me, these like cobra-like threat displays. I'm not scared, but I'm reacting to her lunges and I'm staring down her throat. When you're in the water with an animal like a leopard seal, it really is all about energy. They are coming at you and they're lunging. And when an animal that is so big is lunging at you and it has all these teeth and its mouth is so enormous, you better hold your cool. Because the minute you flee, the minute you recoil, then you become prey. You can see that they're sneaking behind you, but it's terrifying, I'm not gonna lie. I was worried, you know, that one of these animals was just gonna get too curious and try to bite an arm or a leg to see what it's made of. 
If she wanted to, she could really do all sorts of damage, you know. But then when you would stop and look in her eyes, they were so expressive, they were gentle. And then she went away a little bit. She came back and she had a penguin in her mouth and she held it right in front of my face. She lines it up with me and she lets it go. And the penguin swims away past me and she chases it and grabs it again. She did this over and over. It, it dawned on me that she's trying to feed me a penguin. She's trying to get me to accept a penguin. And then when she realized I couldn't catch a live, swimming, moving penguin, she started to bring me dead penguins. And she just stared at me with this dejected look on her face. Just absolute disappointment. Like I was this useless predator in her ocean and that I wasn't going to be able to survive. And then she sort of switched into this mode that she was determined to figure out why I was there. So we sort of just became like a toy for her where she just wanted to solve this mystery of why we are in her prime hunting grounds. And who are we to just jump into her territory where they've never seen humans before? You're asking a lot of that animal to all of a sudden analyze you, think about the situation, check itself, control its own emotion, its own adrenaline. It's been one of the most extraordinary nature experiences I've ever had. And I never felt threatened. Well, maybe just once or twice. But nice. <laughs> <Stupid. laughs> what an experience. Nature is neither merciful nor cruel. It's just the way it is. And the more time you spend out in nature, the more you realize that it's, it's just the way things happen. To share that experience with her, to see the emotion and the tears well up in her eyes, was a real gift. And I think she understood a little more about me on that day. And I've never had a moment where I truly felt like I was in trouble. They really were one of the most charismatic, fun, engaging, interesting animals I've ever spent time with. To have this leopard seal come and engage with us, such an intelligent animal. Here's an animal that's just trying to survive. It lives in an incredibly challenging, icy world that is changing at the hands of man, where it's warming and disappearing. We have to protect this place. We have to protect these animals. We have to protect the whole ecosystem. That one animal, for me, was a turning point and became the way to connect a global audience to this special, invulnerable ecosystem. We are all connected. And if we can save a place like this, then ultimately, there's still hope for the future.